Well, this is the best part of Chapter 17. Coming up in this mini lecture, let me tell you, your synthetic toolbox is about to be expanded like you wouldn't believe. So let's just dive in. First things first, outline. We've covered the general mechanism. You've got the whole review of oxidation states, and now you know how to reduce carbonyls by adding a hydride reagent. Now we look at a different nucleophile, alkylithiums and the Grignard. So this is kind of, these are the workhorses of organometallic chemistry at this level. The reactions that they can undergo are electrophiles, meaning nucleophiles, as you would expect. The only thing that's different is we're in chapter 17, so the electrophile is our polar pi bond. And now in this mini lecture, this is our nucleophile, not H minus, but R minus, in other words, a carbanion. What is this carbanion of which you speak? Well, that's the notorious alkylithiums, R, Li, and Grignard reagents, a magnesium salt. Both of these translate into C minus. Therefore, they're really strong bases and they're really strong nucleophiles. That said, don't forget that you've already known some carbanions. Don't forget your enolates. Don't forget your alkynyl anions. They're still good carbon anions. What makes them different is that you get to these guys by deprotonation. And you will see that these guys have to be arrived at by a completely different route. All right, so what about the reactions of these really strong nucleophiles and, accordingly, really strong bases? Well, naturally, since they're really strong bases, they're happy to undergo proton transfer. So this organolithium I'm showing is affectionately known as bule, and butyl lithium, which basically corresponds to a four carbon chain where that terminal carbon has a negative charge and a lithium counter ion. Needless to say, if you think about the strength of this base, it's readily apparent, I hope, that it would be very, very easy for this thing to rip a proton off of water to give you this conjugate acid and this conjugate base. So here's my acid with a pKa of around 16, eh, really more like 15. And here's my conjugate acid with a pKa of about 5,0. So needless to say, this really, really happens very quickly. So. Beware, beware, organolithiums and organomagnesium reagents, aka Grignards, cannot exist in the presence of any kind of acidic hydrogen. You have been warned. Reaction two is the good reaction, the reaction we want to have happen. We want it to react with a polar pi electrophile like a carbonyl so that we can make a new carbon-carbon bond. So it is totally legitimate to just go ahead and cross out your magnesium or your lithium and consider this guy as a carbanion. So here we've got a negative charge and that nucleophile is going to react with that electrophile to make a new carbon-carbon bond. Here is the nucleophile. Here is my new bond. Here is the electrophile. And since that is anionic and we're under basic conditions, we will need to have a workup to protonate that to give you your final product which will be this tertiary alcohol. 
as shown right there. So notice a Grignard right here or, or Organolithium plus a ketone right here gives you, voila, a tertiary alcohol. Now, I'm just going to highlight some things here. This was my ketone and this was my Grignard. We will come back to this. Basically, we are disconnecting that bond right there. We just made that bond when we added the Grignard to the ketone. All right, another example. What if it's an alkyl lithium like this one, methyl lithium? How does the reaction change? Well, really it doesn't. For all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. It's definitely the same electron movement. Nucleophile attacks electrophile. Now I've added a methyl group here. So this is what I added. This was my aldehyde. And so when I protonate this upon workup, I have this guy. There's the H from the aldehyde A secondary alcohol. So Grignards plus alcohols give secondary alcohols. There it is. All right, Grignard plus ketone tertiary, Grignard plus aldehyde secondary. What about a primary alcohol? How do I make a primary alcohol from this chemistry? Well, accordingly, Based on what I see over here, this is my anion. So all of this piece must be my alkyl lithium. All of this piece is my electrophile. We're going to see that we can pretend do a disconnection by, in essence, pushing the lone pairs back in. Well, actually, it's not pushing lone pairs back in. It's kind of like so. This is just, this is my way of thinking here. I am going to plop this back in there and plop that out. Okay, now this is, this is ridiculous. Let's just make this very clear. This is not a real reaction. This is not a real mechanism. This is a synthetic disconnection. But I'm using it to illustrate that my carbanion can add to this polar pi bond electrophile to give me the product I want. So this is what we call the alcohol disconnection and we'll get used to using this quite a bit. So we can add these crazy Grignards and organolithiums to a boatload of electrophiles. If I add my Grignard or organolithium to formaldehyde, obviously I get a primary alcohol. But I can do aldehydes and ketones I can do imines, I can do nitriles, my goodness, I can even add Grignards to CO2. And that gives me exactly what you'd expect if you think mechanism. A carboxylate, which I can then protonate to get the carboxylic acid. So this is a very, 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 very powerful synthetic tools tool. You have actually seen the Grignards react previous to this because we have been adding Grignards to epoxides, for example. Now, here's our list of electrophiles, and clearly these are all Chapter 17 electrophiles. But what's the electrophile we are most familiar with? 
the alkyl halide, and here is the downfall of many an OCHEM student. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just take this and add, oh, I don't know, methyl chloride to get this? It looks so sensible. After all, all I have to do is cross that out and show the electron movement error is just a nice old normal substitution. But this is in big font, red letters for a reason. Alkyl halides, organolithiums, alkyl halides, Grignards. They do not react well. Okay, I'm not going to say there's no reaction, even though I'm saying no reaction. I'm saying no reaction because I'm saying don't do this on a test. It's not going to work. Your yield will be miserable. It just doesn't work well. And the reasons why are beyond the scope of this class. But just take home this message. Don't add a Grignard or an organolithium to an alkyl halide or a tosylate or a chloride, whatever. Don't try it. It won't work. There. All right, so if the new reaction... We need to think about stereochemistry. What's the scoop? Well, the scoop is these aldehydes and ketones typically are achiral. They're planar. So my R minus can come in from the top side or the bottom side. And in so doing, my nucleophile will end up with a pair of enantiomers from top side approach or bottom side approach, plus minus here. That means since your nucleophile, excuse me, your nucleophile is achiral and if your electrophilic partner is achiral, you can't get something for nothing and you'll end up with a racemic mixture and an EE of zero plus minus. What's the product here? One enantiomer, two enantiomers, diastereomers, what's going on? Approach from the top, approach from the bottom, gives you a 50-50 mixture of this amine. From, again, doesn't hurt to show the mechanism. We can't show the mechanism too many times. There's my polar pi bond. Puts the anion on the nitrogen, and then in a subsequent workup step, that gets protonated to put on the hydrogen right there. So again, racemic mixture, equal amounts of both enantiomers. Now, if these Grignards are so wonderful, how do you make them? Well, I can tell you, not easily. The good news is a lot of them are commercially available, and so we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but a lot of them aren't. Something that has a little bit more complicated structure or different substituents might need preparing in your lab. So basically it's pretty straightforward. You take your zero valent metal, in this case magnesium, and what happens? It pretty much inserts right in between the carbon and the bromine bond. Note very importantly that this is an aprotic solvent for obvious reasons. If I tried to make this in the presence of, for example, an alcohol, well, that would just deprotonate the alcohol and you'd be dead in the water. So you can make a Grignard reagent from an aryl halide or an alkyl halide by adding the zero valent metal in an aprotic solvent. I'm just going to throw out here that it's not just that the solvent is aprotic. Would this work as a solvent? It's aprotic. Well, no, this would be a terrible solvent to use for forming this Grignard, and I'll let you think about why. If you have a question you can't figure it out, let me know. In any case, the overall preparation of this Grignard shows that we are oxidizing the magnesium. It's going from zero valent to plus two, like it's Mg plus two, Br minus over here, and C minus over here. This whole thing cancels out. 
since the bromine, I mean, excuse me, since the magnesium is oxidized, it's showing. Ha! Look at that. The carbon is totally getting reduced. We got a plus one over here. Oh, we got a minus one now. That's pretty, that's pretty reducing. How about organolithiums? Same story. Very important to use an aprotic solvent. What you need to know is that stoichiometrically, since magnesium is in the second column of the periodic table and lithium is in the first, I need two equivalents of my lithium in order to make the alkyl lithium. So what you end up with is a, in this example, you'll end up with a byproduct of the lithium bromide, ah, excuse me, not the lithium bromide, in this example, the lithium iodide. So that's how you make these things. It's it's hard because they're so, so reactive, they really like to react with anything they can, like moisture in the air. So the reduction is the same as for magnesium, just the stoichio stoichiometry, it changes. They react the same way, but in general, alkyl and aryl lithiums are somewhat more reactive than Grignard reagents, and so a little bit more of a pain in the rear end to use. Okay, so how does this happen? What's going on? Well, I got news for you. We're not going to tell you. It's beyond the scope of this course. It's a well understood mechanism. If you would like to learn more, you should probably take uh, the advanced organic course here at UMM because it's fascinating stuff. Organic metallic chemistry is very interesting and it opens up all kinds of new and interesting synthetic possibilities. All right, so they're great reagents. They're wonderful to use, but what is wrong with this picture? This is a synthetic trap. What's the issue? Remember, you must use an aprotic solvent. All right, I want to make this Grignard reagent right here. All I need to do is throw in some magnesium. What's wrong with this picture? Right there, there's an acidic hydrogen in my starting material. The moment, the instant that this is formed, another molecule of that will show up, be present, get deprotonated, and I killed, quenched my Grignard. It's not a happy thing. So, beware of the synthetic trap. Next mini lecture, more fun with carbanions in the form of ill-ids. I'm not making this up. See you in class.